Hello friend, welcome back to Acre Homestead. My name is Becky and today we have our first Azure pickup in three months. And before I go pick it up, I wanted to do some organizational stuff because I want to get the Azure stuff in and organized. And I want to process some of it a little different than I ever have before. So we had a freezer in our basement die and some of the stuff that was in that freezer last minute, I had to scramble and toss it in this freezer. This is the freezer in our garage. I want this freezer to be dedicated only to for freezer meals and prepared foods because it's upstairs. I want my bulk food type things to be downstairs. So what I need to do is remove anything from here that got put in here during that stressful moment when I realized my freezer died and I needed to get in here. And I do need to do some freezer cooking probably in the next month or so. And I kind of want to do an inventory and figure out what I have and what type of meals I should make in the next big cooking day we do together. All right. I guess there's not as much stuff in here <laughs> that needs to go downstairs as I thought there was. I'm gonna bring this milk down there. Bring these tortillas. Maybe we could make some breakfast burritos because I have a ton of tortillas that could be turned into breakfast burritos. Things. Today kind of took on a mind of its own and it definitely, what I was planning on doing expanded quite a bit. My Azure pickup was supposed to be at 9 a.m. and I got a text at about eight saying that it was gonna be delayed and I didn't know when it was gonna be delayed to. So my goal originally for today was to go pick up my order and come home and process it, which we're still gonna do today. But I had this time where I thought I was gonna be busy going and picking up my order that I just started organizing. And so we end up doing a ton of organizing on the food storage and in one of the pantries. We do some inventory on food storage and then we do get to go pick up our Azure order and then we process it. And I'm really excited to share with you how I process some of the things that I get because it has been so nice and it's something I'm gonna do moving forward every single time I go pick up a bulk order of well, you'll see in a little bit what we're gonna process and I'm really, really happy with it. All right, we got it all organized. So let me show you what I have in here. Down here, we have our marinated meat. So we are good on that for a while. We have one meatloaf that's frozen, two different curries and stroganoff. Up here, we have some breast milk. I'm thinking about freeze drying that. If you guys have had any success with that, let me know. That's super precious stuff, so I wanna make sure that if I freeze dry it, it's a good thing. We had just regular milk. I decided to keep our tortillas up here. These are some freezer meal dinners, plus we have some appetizers. These are um, jalapeno poppers. We've got dessert on this shelf. I have an apple crisp and apple pies from our apples last year. Some cookie dough, our roasted garlic, up here is dinners and breakfast. This is some dinner freezer meals. We have waffles, breakfast cookies, French toast, sausage McMuffins, more freezer meals. These are stuffed peppers. Over here we have some frozen homemade pizza dough and biscuits. I'm getting kind of low. I only have one of each of those. We have some pie crust and these are pasties, homemade gnocchis, some pot stickers, milk, and then I am keeping some veggies in here just so I don't have to run downstairs. We've got cauliflower and green beans, potatoes, peas and carrots, some cooked sausage, and some orange juice. I am a little bit better stocked than I thought I was, so it'll be just maybe, maybe two or three weeks before we need to do some big bulk freezer cooking for dinners because I just did breakfast and it would be good to get some more dinners in there, but I kind of want to eat down some of those before we make more. Now this is all that I need to bring downstairs. I have a box of whole chickens. I have some extra potatoes. Those can go downstairs and some sausage. I want all this like meat and type things in my freezers downstairs. Before I run downstairs, I know that there's items in this pantry that I want to go down there. I kind of want to pare back what I have in here and this area right now is a little overwhelming and I want to just get some stuff out of here. One thing right off the bat, I want to repurpose this basket. We just got some furniture for our living room 
and I want this to be a blanket basket and right now it's holding I found a big bowl of garlic I thought I was done peeling garlic but I found a big bowl in here and some onions so we're gonna take that out and then it has a bunch of dried peppers from leftovers from when we made the enchilada sauce I'm not going to use these up here anytime soon so these can go downstairs they definitely don't need to be sitting up here got some sweet potatoes I need to use these so I'm gonna put these in the kitchen that way it'll remind me to use them and one thing I wanted to do during pantry challenge was make tamales never happened so I'm gonna bring those downstairs too those are the corn husks and we'll try to make them sometime but just today was not the day to do that and now I have this basket I can put blankets in I probably will have to kind of clean it out from any dust or anything but this is a perfect basket for blankets in the living room and it was just taking up too much space in here now I want to bring down some of these jars too I have a bunch of extra jars I have jars in the kitchen above the oven so I don't need this many jars in here and then another thing I want to get out of here is my extra vinegars I don't need my bulk vinegars for canning season up here I'll keep one gallon up here and the rest can go downstairs and I'm an extra bottle of lemon juice that can go downstairs that's where I had all my extra vinegars I still have that many up here which is more than enough I kind of need to tidy this area too and down here it's just kind of gotten out of control so let's go ahead since I'm in here let's give this area a reset my Azure pickup is at noon and it is 10 right now so I should be able to get these organizational projects done before I need to go pick up my Azure pickup so I've got all these loud nine or baking dishes these are all baking dishes that I use for when I do freezer meals and it's starting to accumulate over here because I've been emptying my stash of freezer meals during this postpartum time and then I've just been guilty of just kind of throwing them in here and I want to take a second to get them organized so that when I go to do a cooking day I can just pull out what I need I have all these different ones with these lids which are incredible so I just need to get them like with like and like this bowl does not go down here so I have my baking dishes with my snap lids here and these are a little bit different style baking dish with lid and those are here so we've got that nice this is my nice casserole dish. I got this at Goodwill for six bucks, but when I want it to look a little bit prettier, like a lasagna for a dinner party, then I use this. So we'll just stick that right there. Sweet, now we have two projects done. We got this freezer up here organized. We got this taken care of, which has been really bothering me in a matter of less than 10 minutes. Now here, I've been looking for this cleaner. <laughs> I'm gonna set that aside. I've got three containers of bags I probably don't need this many recycled bags so we're gonna condense this and we only need one I do like to keep paper bags on hand so we're gonna condense that to one I'm gonna go ahead and put this in here because that'll help me remember to only keep it to one here are my reusable bags I only need you know what let's do this I'm gonna put this back under here because that's taken care of. In this plastic bag, let's put these bags because I don't want to use one of my nice reusable bags, hard-sided totes, to hold these. Because I want to use that for organizing or grocery shopping or something. So we're gonna put it in this plastic tote, these in this plastic tote. Target bags. I like these two to reuse, so I'm going to stick those in here. So now 
now that I've organized down here, I have space right here that I can put the last of my fresh potatoes from last year's garden in here. I didn't really want them on the floor, but I had no space for them. So now I've just made space. Now back here in these big tubs, I have a bucket of white flour, oats, whole wheat flour, and I need to get a bucket of sugar in here. I keep all of those downstairs in the basement as well, but those are the four bulk items that I use the most. And I like to have a bucket up here so that from my kitchen, I can just come in here and refill and I don't have to run downstairs every time. But I'm completely out of white sugar and that's why there's no bucket of white sugar. So that's one thing we're picking up today. So when we fill that up, we'll be able to put that here. And now I need to tackle this. While I'm in town, I think I'm gonna run to Goodwill because I've got a stash of Goodwill. That's stuff I've been trying to, under my closet, under my stairs, I have a basket. And now I keep that under there all the time as I find things that need to be donated or to the Salvation Army. I have been just putting stuff in that box and the box is full. So I think I'm gonna go to the Salvation Army today and drop it off. I'm gonna donate my rice cooker. I used to cook all my rice in a rice cooker, but I, I, I haven't wanted to store a rice cooker and an Instapot. So we're gonna donate the rice cooker and we'll just use the Instapot for moving forward. If I have this half empty, I'm gonna take a second to go ahead and clean it. It is a little bit grimy. That is pretty dirty. This is great timing. Got my waffle maker here. I'm gonna sweep the floors when we're all done here. So if I just put it on the floor, then I'm not gonna worry about that because we'll just sweep when we're done. So we've got our waffle maker, instant pot. Slow cooker. And this is where we can keep our smaller appliances. And then here we have our food saver and our food saver bags. I think I'm going to get a different food saver this summer. Mine, I just got it at Costco. It's already broken. I have, It broke last summer. I just haven't had a chance to take it back to Costco. I think they'll take it back. Costco is really good about taking it back. I don't know now that it's been so long. But I've been researching industrial or like the the steel stainless steel ones and with how much food preservation I do I don't think one of these plastic grade ones is going to cut it for me so I've, I've been considering getting an industrial grade food saver these two shelves completely taken care of. I'm super happy with the progress there. So I think we can start moving. Oh no, I got some more stuff up here I gotta take care of. I think I'm gonna put this bowl of onions and garlic down here next to the potatoes. I know onions and potatoes should not be next to each other if you're gonna store them for long term, but this is just gonna be here for just daily cooking. I'll probably use them in the next week or so. And you can see it already looks a lot better. I do like to keep paper coffee cups around just for convenience. And we've got our small appliances, our cooking dishes, our bags, our potatoes and onions. Now I need to tackle this area up here. I found some random containers down there that don't go down there. So this bag is going downstairs. Got some extra totes here. I'm gonna just condense these here. I think I'm gonna bring some of these downstairs because I'm gonna use those in the freezer to organize because that's one thing we have to do. This bowl goes up with the stainless steel bowls. I've gotten a lot of these stainless steel bowls at estate sales. My really, really big ones were off Amazon, but the smaller ones I have, I got for like two bucks at estate sales, which is awesome. go in my kitchen I'm not sure why or how this paddle attachment to my kitchen ended up in here so we're gonna put that away now 
I'm just going to sit here and try to get the rest of this organized. I am going to bring these empty quart jars downstairs. I have an area in my kitchen above my oven where I keep quite a few empty jars, quarts, pints, and half pints. And I just don't need empty jars in three different areas of my house. I don't need it above the oven in this pantry and downstairs. So those are going to go downstairs. And then while I'm in here and I've got this counter surface pretty much cleared, I'm going to go ahead and give it a clean. Now I have all these bottles of opened white wine. This is from the Galentine's Day party. If you guys have any recommendations on what I could do with that, I'm going to, I'm thinking about trying to make white wine vinegar with it, but I've never made white wine vinegar. I've made lots of other kinds of vinegar. And so I'm going to maybe try that. If you guys have any other good uses for open bottles of white wine, I would love to hear your suggestions on that. So this is a good reminder to clean your surfaces. I would have not thought that this counter would have gotten that dirty, but my goodness, gross. I wasn't really planning to kind of do this big of a clean in here, but while I'm at it, it only took a couple extra minutes. You can see I missed some stuff. And now it feels much, much better in here. Don't always have the time to do it, but I happen to have a few minutes, so we're getting it clean. jars now where my empty jars go I'm just gonna organize as I bring things down here I was gonna bring it all down here then organize but I thought that's silly let's just go ahead and put it where it goes so our vinegars our canning vinegars I don't use this type of lemon juice for canning anymore I have it so I'm gonna keep it and I will use it at some point but I really prefer this lemon juice this is a 100 percent lemon juice this stuff has a bunch of it has like citric acid in it and i just don't think it has a very good flavor so it's hard to see on here but the ingredients in this is the first ingredient is water lemon juice from concentrate lemon oil sodium benzenate and sodium metasulfate those are preservatives contains sulfites, products, and so I, if I'm gonna go through the effort of canning, that's a lot of work. It's a lot of work growing it or sourcing it locally, and I want it to taste really good. I just don't think this stuff tastes very good. So I'm not gonna get rid of it. I'm gonna keep it in my pantry and find something to do with it. But this lemon juice is, the ingredients are organic lemon juice. That's it, it's not even organic lemon juice from concentrate. So that is why I like to do my canning with this stuff. I also have some Costco items that need to be taken care of today. And these are some canning projects that we did not that long ago. And these need to be taken care of today as well. So this section over here is where I have my store-bought goods that I need to restock. So I've got some olive oil here. And then here is some brown sugar. I'm gonna put over here because now I can find organic brown sugar at Costco for a really, really good price. So I don't have to make it right now. And I've got this coffee. This is such good coffee. Mm, I can actually smell it through the bag. I used, or I opened my last bag of coffee during this pantry challenge. So that needs to go back on the pantry shelf. So I got two bags of those. And now I have some toothpaste. This section over here is where we have our household items. Things like deodorant, Q-tips, soap, sunscreen, and now toothpaste. This is an area that I do want to kind of expand and fill out. I feel like there has holes in it. Up here we have garbage bags and Ziploc bags. I just want to fill this out with some more household goods. I guess down here we have some candles. These are some dishes that I've bought at Goodwill over the years for parties. And then down here we have um, hairspray and mousse, lint rollers, and some like cleaners and stuff. Shampoos and those types of good things, but I've got the food area done pretty well. 
and stocked, but I want to, not today or tomorrow, but I need to focus my time more on the household items. I guess like right there, I have a random thing of toilet paper. I should probably get all of those types of things condensed into one spot. Cause I know upstairs in the garage, we have this random room and I know that there's toilet paper, baby wipes and paper towels up there. And so that's a project for a different day. Right now we're working on these food items. So we got our Costco box emptied. And this box is where I have extra spices. This is homegrown garlic and some homemade ranch powder. This is some homegrown herbs. So I think I'm gonna put these peppers here. And then I probably will need to find a different container for them because right now these bags are not going to be a good long-term solution. But for now, they're going there because they are kind of in the spice realm along with our corn husks. And now we've got our freezer items that we need to take care of. When Josh came to me and was like, I think that freezer is going to die soon. I didn't honestly believe that it was going to die soon. But I'm glad I listened to him because it died. <laughs> and so now this freezer is very clean and very organized. I want to keep it that way. But let me get these items that were upstairs that need to now come down here. So I think I got everything in here that goes in here, except for this box of chicken goes in here. Okay, I'm gonna bring you in and show you how awesome this looks. Part of the reason it looks so good is because we spent time organizing it and getting rid of anything that was bad. But also when the freezer died, because I had done that organizing, it was so easy to make sure everything was safe and to keep it nice and organized. These are my favorite way to keep the deep freezer organized is with these hard sided totes. And all of the bags in here are the same except this one. And I want to have them all match because even that can make it look more organized just by having everything match. So this tote is all chicken thighs. So I'm gonna get this tote out. And let me bring you in and show you what this looks like. Right here, we have four big things of rhubarb from last year's garden from the last homestead that I need to process. Oh, maybe there's five. I need to process these really soon. We've got a tote of nuts. This is a tote of just chicken breast, a tote of just chicken thighs. This box is pasture raised whole chickens. We have cod and salmon here and a big bag of chocolate chips a huge empty space. And then up here, we have some frozen peppers and frozen greens from last year's garden. We've got frozen potatoes, frozen pumpkin from 2021 that needs to be used. I'm gonna put, yes, that looks much better. We've got our frozen hash browns here. I did not realize I have so many frozen hash browns. This is why I'm glad I organized and we've got frozen veggies here. So what this has allowed me is have a chicken and seafood freezer, and then the rest of it is gonna be veggies from this year's garden, hopefully. Josh and I prefer our produce, except for really tomatoes and tomatillos, to be frozen as opposed to canned. So hopefully we will have a ton of green beans, a ton of onions, a ton of carrots, and more greens and more pumpkin and all sorts of zucchini and stuff like that in here from this coming garden. And in this freezer, this is mostly beef and pork. I just put an order in for a whole hog. So hopefully that will be coming. Well, it, it won't be until the fall, this coming fall. So I'm going to put, this is pork sausage that I just got at Costco. This is my pork sausage tote. So I'm going to put that in here. Oh, this is a whole chicken that got thrown in here in the craziness of trying to save anything that was in that freezer. So I'm gonna take this whole chicken and put it back over here. This is the last thing that I need to put away until we go pick up our order. I've got in here some chicken broth. This is some really good chicken broth. I think I'm gonna go forward making chicken broth this way. I didn't add any onions or garlic or herbs or anything. All it was was chicken bones and chicken skin. And it is the best broth I've ever made. And I made it in quarts and pints and some half pints. I have found that I don't always need a quart of broth when I go to open broth. And so I wanna start canning some broth in some smaller containers. 
And then we have our blueberries that we canned together that we grew on last year's homestead. I'm loving the blueberries. I have already used them in baked oatmeal for Josh and they hold up really well. I'm glad that I did add some sugar to them so that they are they, they keep their texture, their color, their flavor a little bit better. I didn't put a ton, just enough to sweeten them a bit and then I sweetened the baked oatmeal anyway so this is perfect. So now we have five of those on the pantry shelf. And you know what friend, the last thing in this, that oh that's blueberries. So I guess we have six of them, let's see. The last thing in this container are these caramelized onions. If you watch that video, I am so unhappy with how these turned out. It is the first thing I have really just failed epically on when it comes to a canning project in a long time. And I was telling my mother-in-law, cause she's a pretty avid canner too, and she canned caramelized onions. And I was telling her, man, these onions turned out horrible. And she said, you know what? I canned some caramelized onions and I haven't tasted the ones that she canned yet. She opened hers up and they were fabulous. So we are planning a canning session together where we're actually gonna can some meals in a jar. Because if you see my canning shelves, almost all of the canning stuff I have on here are all ingredients or jams or salsas or enchiladas. They're all ingredients that you'd use to make a meal. I don't have any meals on the pantry shelf or their single item ingredients like pinto beans, chicken, broth, potatoes, things like that. And my mother-in-law is an avid canner when it comes to putting meals on her pantry shelf. I'm really good at putting meals in my freezer. I just have never canned a whole meal before. So we're gonna do that where we're gonna do some caramelized onions and get some meals on the pantry shelf. And she's gonna teach me how to do that because I have never done it and she's really good at it. So that's gonna be soon. Now we've got everything organized. Of the items that I already have at the house, I still need to organize all this stuff and process some of the stuff that I'm gonna pick up from Azure. Now these three buckets right here are empty. So we're gonna fill those up. I've got about 15 minutes or so, I think, actually. Oh no, I have an hour before I need to go pick up the order. So I think I can hear the baby stirring. He's probably hungry, it'd be good to get him fed. I'm gonna load up my car with this stuff for the donations. I'm gonna go check, we could go check and see if we have gotten any eggs today. My chickens have started laying again, which has been a huge blessing. I'm so glad that they are laying and they are laying such bigger eggs. I have had to buy some eggs at the store to supplement my chickens from their lack of laying. And the chicken eggs you get at the store now are so small. So I'm really grateful that my girls are laying. It's actually snowing right now. There's not that much snow on the, I mean, there's snow on the ground, but there's not compared to what there was. Oh, oh my goodness. I just collected the eggs yesterday. And there's already five eggs and they're so dirty just because it's so muddy outside. I'm disturbing her. So let me get these eggs. So, wow, I got five eggs today. That is incredible. I was, when they started laying again, only getting one egg a day. I'm putting these in my pocket, which is probably not the best idea. I'm gonna go straight upstairs, wash these off, and stick them in the fridge. If these eggs came out clean, then I don't have to wash them and I can keep them on my counter. But when they're muddy like this, this is just mud because it's just a mud pit anywhere where there's not snow on the ground. And she's not very happy with me, so I'm gonna get this closed so she can have some privacy. Today is the first day they are working on the garden again in the last two and a half weeks because it has been so snowy. There's no way they could even get up here, the gardeners, and it wasn't a safe environment to work in, and you couldn't even get to the garden beds because they were covered in snow. So I'm gonna go wash these eggs and then we will head to Azure. I never finished talking about these caramelized onions. I'm not sure exactly what to do with them. I think I just need to open them up and compost them and just chalk that up to a learning experience and then try it again because I would love to have caramelized onions on my pantry shelf. They're one of Josh and I's favorite things. And if I could have it delicious on my pantry shelf, I would love that. But the ones I made, they're not going on the pantry shelf. Time to load up the car. In here is where I've got the stuff that I keep for donations. So I, since I've got a little bit of time before I've got my Azure pickup, I'm just gonna go ahead and run and donate those things before the pickup. Then we'll do the pickup 
and then we'll come back and we're gonna, I'll show you everything I got, and then we're going to put it all away and we are going to process some of the stuff I got right away so that I can make it into a more convenient item moving forward. That was quite the experience picking up an Azure pickup in the rain. I have never had to do that before. The cool thing about the people when you are at an Azure pickup is everyone is so helpful and everyone helped so much. Normally, you could see how all those names were laid out and everyone's stuff gets put in those spots. But by the time we got to, let me show you. The everyone just went and grabbed their item and put it directly in their car because you wouldn't want to put a paper bag full of sugar or flour on the ground that's soaking wet. So that was definitely an interesting experience. I'm really glad I was there right when the pickup was. This is my first pickup in three months and it's a good size, but it's not massive. And I'll show you everything I got. I have one more box. Yes, I went to the Goodwill pickup in my or drop off and my Azure pickup in my apron, but I had my coat on, so no one was the wiser. Josh made some brown butter chocolate chip cookies yesterday, and they're fantastic. So I need to get those out of the way. So the way that Azure works, if you've never ordered through them, is they recycle boxes to ship the product in. So you might have a box that says frozen potatoes. That's what I had the first time I ordered and I was like, I didn't order frozen potatoes. Why do I have four boxes that say frozen potatoes? And it's because they recycle boxes, which I think is, oh my goodness. Well, this was a mistake on my end because it looks like I got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine quarts of half and half. I know exactly what happened here. <laughs> I'll just freeze all of them except for maybe two. When you order a lot of things through Azure, you can order one, three, six a lot of times or a case of something. And I thought I was ordering three quarts of half and half. And I must have ordered three of the three half and half, so that's what I ended up with nine. Here, I know exactly what this is. I got two five-ish pound blocks of organic raw cheddar cheese. So this is one of the things we're gonna process here in just a minute after I get all this stuff taken care of. And then let's see what we got in here. See, I didn't order a ton of stuff. I guess technically I ordered more stuff than I meant to. Let's see. Oh yeah, we got some fun things. I forgot. We got some really fun things in this order. I got some seeds in this order. A pound of black pepper because I was out of black pepper. Two boxes of raspberry leaf tea because I can't get enough of that two little bottles of apple cider vinegar with the mother. This one I got out of the bargain bin. They have a section on Azure where they have discounted things. And this was, I think, 25% off because the label is a little messed up, but it doesn't affect the product on the inside. So I'm happy to buy something with a little bit of a label that's messed up for a better price. Some coffee filters, because I only have about six left coffee filter so those came just in time 
And then sour cream. This is my favorite sour cream, this Nancy sour cream. And I did order three of these because it's cheaper to order three instead of one. And good thing I didn't order nine of these, like I did the half and half. That happens to the best of us. This is another project I'm gonna do, not today, because I just don't have time and the energy to do it today. But I ordered a ton of ginger and turmeric. These are the rhizomes, so it's fresh turmeric. I ordered one pound total of turmeric, and I ordered two pounds total of ginger. There's these little ginger turmeric shots you can get. You can get them at my grocery store, but you can also get them at the airport. And anytime I fly, I buy these little ginger turmeric shots. I absolutely love them, but they're like $2.99 each which that's why I only do it when I go to the airport because that doesn't happen very often. So it's kind of like my treat to myself. And I want to make those so and freeze them. So because I can buy them at the grocery store, but I'm not going to spend $3 on these ginger shots. So I'm going to make them. I got five pounds of mozzarella. We are going to process this today. And I got one pound of cumin. And the rest of the things in here are seeds. I got a bunch of seeds because I just needed to do some fill-in seed shopping and you know I was looking at flowers and I ordered flowers. One thing, I thought I had enough corn seeds but when I did an inventory I didn't so that's what kind of took me down the seed journey. So I ordered corn seeds. I'm going to grow corn in my raised beds. I have never had good luck growing corn. I've only gotten maybe 10 ears of corn total and I've planted hundreds and hundreds of corn seeds over the last three years. But I've always tried to grow it in ground. This year, I'm going to try to grow it in a raised bed with constant water, watering. Corn needs to be watered really regularly. And when I grew it in ground, I didn't have irrigation on it. And so hopefully this is gonna be the game changer that I need in order to grow my own corn. So I got golden bantam sweet corn. It's an heirloom variety. Just says an old standard yellow sweet corn has been a home gardener's favorite since the beginning of the 20th century. A farmer named William Chambers of Greenfield, Massachusetts had grown this variety for years. After his death, a friend of him found some of the sweet corn seeds and sold them to Burpee where they found their way into catalog into the catalog in 1902. The plant grows about six feet, produces seven inch ears loaded with sweet, plump, golden kernels. So three inches apart. So keep moist, it says keep moist. So that's one thing that I have not done. There we go. So I think I got five seed packets. So I think I'm gonna dedicate two raised beds to corn. And then I got, I'll just show you real quick what I got here. We got our sweet corn. I got some poppy seeds. We have pinto beans, contender green beans. These were sold out at MI Gardener. That's why I wanted to get them here. We have blue lake bush beans. We have another poppy, two varieties of carrots. And that is all the seed I got. I only got two other things. And this is really why I needed to order. And that is because right here, I got a 50 pound bag of organic sugar. I did run out of sugar during this pantry challenge, so I needed to restock that. And then I got a 50 pound bag of organic, just white all purpose flour. I love this flour. I can buy, I used to be able to buy this at Costco and that's the first time I tried it and you can only get 20 pounds at Costco. So I went ahead and got a 50 pound bag at Azure because I needed to restock my flour. Now I get the pleasure of putting all of this away and I, I still, that this half and half is hilarious to me. I did not mean to do that. So now I'm going to put all this away. I think what I'm gonna do to put a lot of it away, cause a bunch of this, like these coffee filters can go downstairs next to my bulk coffee. I'm just gonna throw it in this box. And well, I guess, my raspberry leaf tea can go down there because I have one box open up here. I'll put that next to the coffee. And let's actually just take care of the stuff that needs to be taken care of up here before we go downstairs. So I'm gonna put these seeds in that box too. So those seeds I'm gonna put directly into my grow room. 
The vinegar can go downstairs. I'll put one of these in here and we will use these. I'll use it and then I'll also put my ginger and turmeric in my fridge because I will probably get to this in the next four or five days. I still can't believe I ordered. Ugh, that is hilarious. I have never froze half and half before. I freeze um, whole milk all the time and it freezes just fine. So I'm not sure how the half and half is, <laughs> is gonna freeze. Uh, I, I probably should do some Googling. So here's my cumin jar and this is all the cumin I have left in my house. So I'm gonna go ahead and take a second to fill it up. Oh, I can already, oh, I probably can smell the one I just opened, not the, <laughs> the one I'm just about to open. Oh wow, that smells incredible. I'm gonna take the cumin that's in my jar and put it in this other jar. And then I'm gonna refill my jar with the new stuff. I wonder if this one pound bag will fit in here. Maybe if I push it down. Yep, it fits. Plus I'm gonna take my cumin that I had in there and I'm gonna just top that off. And there we go. It's gonna go back on the shelf. So now I'm gonna go ahead and process this cheese. I buy 15 pounds of cheese all the time from Azure in these bulk things and I never process them right when I get home. And I've never had, I've only ever had mozzarella go bad one time on me and it was 100% my fault. It was when I gave birth and I had already opened the mozzarella. This pepper, I'm gonna go ahead and bring downstairs because I already have some pepper up here. I had opened it. It was half open, wrapped up in the fridge, of course, but mozzarella goes bad a lot faster because it's a softer cheese that has a lot more moisture than a more aged cheese like this raw cheddar cheese would last a lot longer. And so that was my fault. Normally when I open mozzarella, I try to go through it a little bit quicker, but my sharp cheese, I've never had it go bad. Usually I just cut a, a section off. I shred it. I try to shred enough so that I have some for whatever, like for having tacos and I need cheese for tacos. And then I try to shred enough to have some in the refrigerator that's pre-shredded. So next time I need cheese for say pizza or something, I don't have to go through the effort of shredding it. I don't really like shredding cheese, but I like the taste, the texture and the quality better of home shredded cheese. But it's not my favorite thing to do. So what I'm thinking I might do, or what I am gonna to do today, is I'm gonna go ahead and shred this whole block of cheddar and this whole block of mozzarella. But I know once I shred it, I can't keep it in the fridge because it will go bad. I can plop this whole wrapped thing in the fridge and that will stay good for a long time. But I'm going to, we're gonna shred this and see how it goes, see if I like this process better of shredding the cheese. I don't want to use that knife because I use that knife to open boxes and see if that goes better for me and more of a convenience item. Just get home from the pickup, process it all, and then see how that goes. So I'm going to just cut this huge loaf of cheese. We're gonna use the food processor today to process this cheese. I have my shredder attachment and I think I'm gonna to have to cut it into one more smaller piece here. I think to fit in the food processor. silicone reusable bags and we are going to put this cheese right in here. Now this is kind of experimental. I'm not putting any starch or anything on it. 
The reason I don't like the texture of pre-shredded cheese you buy at the store is because they put cellulose on it, which is an anti-caking agent, and I find that it just causes the texture of your final food product to be a little bit off, and I just prefer pre-shredded. But I don't have the energy now at this stage of my life to shred cheese every time I need it. So we're gonna just go with this amount. So that was, pro there's probably, let's see, one third of this loaf in here, and it's a five pound loaf, so it's about one third of five pounds in this one Ziploc bag. And like I said, I'm not putting any sort of cornstarch or anything on it. If it clumps in the freezer, then that was an experiment learned. <laughs> we'll figure it out. I'll use it with you for the first time, or I'll use it with you, or I'll update you with how it goes, because I'm curious. That's why I'm only gonna do one loaf of the cheddar, and we're gonna do the whole mozzarella. But I think this is gonna be awesome to have just a, pre, a bunch of pre-shredded cheese in my freezer so that I don't have to shred it all the time. But only time will tell if this is a good idea or it makes a big mistake. One of the cool things though is I'm gonna get a lot of cheese shredded. I'm gonna mess up this food processor just this one time and I won't have to do this for a while. That's kind of what my thought process is here is batch processing cheese basically like batch cooking or batch whatever and batch processing cheese so i'm gonna get all this cheese cut up but i am gonna leave one loaf until i use some of this cheddar cheese in my refrigerator and if i like it then i will take the time to process that other one but i don't want to process all of it the two loaves and then regret it so that I can have pizza whenever and I don't always have to make the crust and it will be so nice just to have pre-shredded cheese or for tacos or casserole making or whatever we all eat well I don't know we, all, we don't all eat cheese but Josh and I enjoy cheese quite a bit so friend I absolutely love this I will always have home shredded cheese in my freezer ready to go. I've used it multiple times. It thaws great. I just put it in the refrigerator and I have this beautiful cheese ready for me whenever I need it. I am definitely going to keep this on hand from now on. I got all that cheddar processed. I got four bags. I stuck the mozzarella in the freezer for just a few minutes because this mozzarella is super soft and it sometimes has a hard time going through my food processor so I thought that if I threw it in the freezer just for I don't know it's probably in there for 10 minutes then it would harden up or firm up just enough to make it a little bit easier to go through the food processor it's actually how I broke one of my plastic prongs on my last food processor was processing mozzarella in it and so I just had this idea that this might help help a little bit. So it's not frozen by any means, it's just cold, like firm, really nice and cold and firm. And there's a little bit of cheddar cheese left in here, but I'm not worried about that because I'm not worried about it. Oh yeah, I can already tell. All right, that's what I'm gonna do moving forward. Stick the mozzarella in the freezer just for 10 minutes or so. I'm on my last piece right now, and par freezing is the way to go. And I just realized I made a grave mistake, friends. <laughs> I don't know what is what. I've got eight bags here, and now I have to figure out which one is cheddar and which ones are mozzarella. All right, these four are cheddar. Goodness. 
I'm gonna bring all this stuff downstairs and put away. I was able to get four bags of cheddar and three bags of mozzarella. And I did not mark on the bags which is which. So I'm gonna show you how I'm going to distinguish between the two. And next time, if I was thinking, because I have different color ones, I should have done all the cheddar in blue and all the mozzarella, and all the mozzarella in red, uh, not red. I can't speak. If I was thinking, I would have done all the cheddar in one color and the mozzarella in another color, but I wasn't thinking through all the way. So I've got an idea of what I'm gonna do down there because I don't want to sharpie on my silicone bags. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put all the mozzarella in this black tote, and then I'm gonna put all the cheddar in, let me show you, one of the ones with the red handles. That way I just know red handle means cheddar, black means mozzarella and I hope I hope this goes over well because that is 10 pounds of cheese now in my freezer that is pre-shredded that tastes delicious and as long as the texture comes out good after freezing that's gonna be a win if this works that'll just be my routine when I get back from my pickup when I order cheese is just get it shredded get it in the freezer but it could be a flop this is an herb, so that can go in a different section. So next to where we put our coffee beans, I should put my coffee filters, like with like, and then we'll put our tea bags next to that. So that looks great. I'll add my black pepper to my spice basket, and I'm gonna put my apple cider vinegar down here. This is raw apple cider vinegar with the mother. I haven't had any of this in my house in a long time, and I really like to drink this. I think it tastes delicious. So I'm glad to have that back on the pantry shelf. Now I need to take care of that 50 pound bag of sugar. These two containers have flour and sugar in them. This is the sugar one and it's completely empty. And so I need to refill it. I probably could have bought two of these and then I wouldn't have to buy sugar for probably two years, but I only got one. You know what? I want to fill one of these buckets up first of sugar that's gonna go upstairs before I fill that big one because I need a thing of sugar upstairs in my pantry. I haven't had that in a while. And this bag, I think is going to fit in this one tote. Oh, it smells good. It smells very, very sweet. So this 50 pound bag almost fills this one five gallon bucket, but there's still some in the bottom. So this is gonna go upstairs. We'll order one more bag just so that I can have this tote completely filled. buying in bulk and food storage, I would highly recommend you make the investment into getting a gamma lid. Gamma lids are these ones that screw because they just make it so much more pleasurable getting in and out of your bulk food storage. And I, because I do so much cooking at home, so much cooking from scratch, I go through a lot of this. I make all of our own homemade jams and jellies, which uses a lot of sugar. So, and flour, a lot of baking from scratch. And so it's just nice being able to easily access it. And I can, I think I wanna get one more of these big totes. These are actually dog food containers, but they're food grade plastic, the same as those five gallon buckets. And I think I want one for oats because I go through the most oats, flour. We go through so much oats and flour. And I think it would be nice to have one of these that is this shape. So. That is something I might have to look into investing in because these, these are a little bit pricey. If you're interested in them, I can link them down below. I can link where I get all my bulk storage containers because I definitely enjoy the gamma lids the best. I should have ordered oats because this bucket is empty. I will put that on my next order.
I decided to bring up a bucket of einkorn because I've been using that a lot lately, einkorn flour. So we have einkorn, whole wheat flour, all-purpose flour, sugar, and oats. I got a lot more done today than I was anticipating and I'm super excited with the progress that we made today and I'm excited about this new experiment, whether this frozen cheese is going to work for me. I guess I could have done it probably with a smaller quantity to begin with, but you all know me. Go big or go home, right? This right here has been staring at me. This is my kombucha. I want to start making that again. Maybe I'll maybe I'll do that this weekend. I plan to take the weekend off. Today is Thursday and I'm going to take Friday, Saturday, and Sunday off. I'm really looking forward to it. I'm probably going to pull a freezer meal out tonight to cook. I do need to finish tidying up the kitchen. I kind of have cheese all over the counter I'm and on the floor, but I think what I'm going to do is let my dogs out and let them kind of pick up the cheese that's on the floor. So I just want to say a huge thank you for taking time out of your day to spend time with me because we got some organizational projects. We got a bulk food order and we just had fun hanging out together. So thank you for being you. Thank you for being here. If you enjoyed this, I can pop a couple of my other videos here. You can go enjoy between now and my next upload. Hope you're having a great day, friend, and I can't wait to see you next time. Bye.